Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we will solve some data sufficiency problems that you will find on page number 213. Turn to it. Make sure the book is in front of you. Page 213, number 1, number 357. If at the end of watching the video, you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you decide that you would like to hire me as a tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can get hold of me at Kishwani Prep at iCloud.com. Let's take a look at the first one. In the first problem, number 357, we are told that x is some positive integer. x is some positive integer. The question is very simple, very straightforward. The question simply is, what's the remainder when x is divided by 4? And of course, at this point, we know nothing about x. So let's see what the first statement tells us. The first statement tells us that the remainder, remainder is 3 when x plus 1 when x plus 1 is divided by 4. So the question is, knowing that the remainder is 3 when x plus 1 is divided by 4, does it help us answer this question? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes because if the remainder is 3 when you divide x plus 1 by 4, then the remainder, the remainder must be, remainder must be 2 when we simply divide x by 4. When, we, when, when, x, when x is divided by 4. Because it's just one less than that. If, it's, if x plus 1 gives us a remainder of 3, then x divided by 4 should give us a remainder of 2. There is no doubt about it. Which means the first statement by itself is quite, quite enough. A, D, B, C, E. Which means the answer cannot be B, C, or E. And if you, if, you, if you want to confirm this thing yourself, if you still feel a little bit uncomfortable, plug in some numbers and you will see it. Some plug in some numbers, you will see you cannot plug in odd numbers. You will see that you cannot plug in odd numbers. For example, if x happens to be 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 divided by 4 does not give us a remainder of 3. We will have to plug in some even number. For example, 6. 6 plus 1 is 7, 7, 7 divided by 4 gives us a remainder of 3. If x is 6, then 6 divided by 4 will give us a remainder of 2. And it will always be 2. Let's do next one. Next one says that the remainder is remainder is zero when two x is divided by four. Remainder is zero when the quantity two x is divided by four. And what's going to happen here is because it's two times x. If x happens to be 2, then 2x is going to be 2x is equal to 4, and of course 4 divided by 4 gives us a remainder of 0, so it does the job. So in this case, x is 2, or x could be 4, 2 times 4, in which case 8 divided by 4, 8 divided by 4 also gives us a remainder of 0. But the problem is that here, here x is 4, here x is 4, therefore x divided by 4 here gives us a remainder of 0. Whereas over here, since x is 2, again x divided by 4, since x is 2, 2 divided by 4 will give us a remainder of 2. Here we have a remainder of 2, here we have a remainder of 0. We cannot tell what the remainder is going to be when you divide the quantity x by 4, whereas before we could. So second statement by itself is not enough, first statement was. The answer is A. The answer is A. 358. 358 says that we are doing some painting job. It says a certain paint mixture, certain paint mixture requires yellow green and white paint. We're making some paint picture which requires these three different colors. 
We are further told that we, can, we, we need 12 quarts of the mixture. 12 quarts of mixture is needed. This is how many quarts of green is needed. How many quarts of green is needed? Let's see what they tell us. We know we know we need 12 quarts, the mixture to be 12 quarts, total of 12 quarts. If, if somehow we can figure out in what's the ratio of these calories that is being mixed, we can figure out how many green we need. So let's see what they tell us. Statement 1 tells us that the ratio of green to yellow plus white is 1 to 3. Now notice here, they do not tell us the ratio of green to yellow to white, but rather they tell us the ratio of green to yellow plus white together. That's okay. It's not a big deal. At this point, we'll treat this as one color. As far as we're concerned, this is just one color. The ratio of green to this thing has to be 1 to 3. We need, which, which makes 4, which makes a total of 4 parts which makes the total of 4 parts and we need a total of 12 quarts we need 12 quarts total which means we need to multiply each of them by 3 there we go we need 3 parts of green we need 3 parts of green and 9 parts of yellow and white what, what ratio yellow and white are going to be mixed in is not our concern we are not worried about that what we are worried about we don't, we are, we don't care about that what we are worried about is how much green we need the answer is, answer is we need 3 quarts of green to do the job First statement does the job quite nicely. A D B C E. The first statement by itself is enough, as you can clearly see. In the second statement, in the second statement, it says that the ratio of yellow to green, yellow to green, is three to two. Is three to two. Simply based on what the ratio of yellow to green is, and knowing absolutely nothing about how much white we need in what proportion. We cannot figure out how much green we need. Impossible. And these are five parts. If, if, if white happens to be one part, then there will be six parts. Since we need twelve cores, we'll need two parts of two cores of green. But we don't know. We don't know what white what white is. Maybe instead of white, maybe it's, it's a, if white is one, then of course it's six. But this is already five. Maybe white is not one. Maybe white is seven. In which case, it's already twelve. In this scenario, we'll need only two cores of green. In the other scenario, we would have needed two. Uh, in this in this scenario, we'll need two quarts of green. As you can see, that adds up to twelve. If white just happens to be one part, that only adds up to six. In which case, to make twelve quarts, we need to multiply everything by two. In this case, we need four quarts of four quarts of green. We can't really tell. We can't really tell. And this is just two possibilities. There are infinite possibilities as to what white might be. We cannot tell. Second statement does not do the job. The answer is A. The answer is A, 359. Let's see what the next one says. Next one, 359. 359 is about average. It says, is the average of X, Y, and Z greater than Z? Now before we do, before we do any work at all, Let's work on this thing and let's bring this into proper inequality that, uh, that we can see very easily that is manageable in terms of algebraic expression. Because algebra is beautiful and it does a very nice job of summarizing concepts. So let's do that, shall we? The average of x, y and z is simply x plus y plus z divided by 3. And we are told that this quantity is greater than z. Since, since 3 is obviously a positive number, we can multiply both sides of the inequality without worrying about the change in the direction of the inequality. Let's do that. So we, if we multiply both sides by 3, we end up with 3 z's. Let's bring z to the other side, and what we end up here is x plus y is greater than 2z. That is the question we need to answer. If we answer this question, we will have answered that question. 
So let's not put the quotient in this way, in a very awkward way, let's put it in something manageable. Is the sum of x and y, is the sum of x and y more than twice z? More than twice the quantity z. Let's see what the first statement tells us. Let's see what the first statement tells us. The first statement tells us that z minus x is less than y minus z. Let's bring z to both to, to one side. Let's bring z this z to this uh, z to both sides here, and let's add x to both sides here. As you can see, minus z and negative z is going to cancel out, and we'll end up here two z's, two z's, and negative x and positive x are going to cancel out, and it says that it is less than less than y plus x, which is same as x plus y, and saying that. 2z is less than x plus y, same as saying that x plus y is more than 2z. It's the exact same thing. What they were asking us is exactly what we found here, which means statement 1 does the job beautifully, nicely. Statement 1 does the, does the job nicely. A, D, B, C, E. Since statement 1 by itself was enough, we know now that the answer has to be either A or D. Let's look at statement 2. Statement 2 says that x has to be less than z and z in turn has to be less than y. And the question we're trying to answer is, is the sum of x and y greater than 2z? That's what we're looking for. So let's just plug in some numbers, very straightforward numbers. Anything at all. How about 1, 2 and 3? That should do the job nicely. Now in this case, x plus y, x plus y is 4. And the question is, is this quantity greater than 2 times z? 2 times z, 2 times z is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. As you can clearly see, that 4 is not greater than 4. But, but, that is not the only scenario. That is not the only possibility. There are infinite possibilities of numbers that we can work with. So what? Here, let's, let's play a little game. Let's play a little small little game. At this point, pause the video. Just pause the video. Trust me on that. Pause the video and you do the second scenario yourself. Say, do the second scenario yourself. And once you have done so, resume the video and learn the game as to how to come up with the second scenario quickly. Okay. So here we go. I hope you, you took my advice and you paused the video and you did the second scenario yourself. Now we will do the second scenario together, shall we? Here is the second scenario. Instead of 1, 2 and 3, why don't we make this guy 3 million? If we make it 3 million, then x plus y, x plus y, x plus y, in that scenario, and in that scenario, x plus y will be greater than 2z. In this scenario, I made it, I went too silly, let's just stick with 30. If, if instead of making, if, if instead of making y, instead of y being 3, if we make it 30, just stick a 0. That's what I'm trying to make you understand, just stick a 0. In that case, of course, we will have x plus y, which is 31, which is indeed greater than 4. So before, this quantity was not greater than this quantity, and now it is. Second statement by itself is not enough. It cannot give us a definitive answer to this question. The answer only answer is answer is only first statement by itself does the job. Second statement is no good. That was 359. That was 359. 360. 360 is the point Q on the circle with center C. Very simple, very straightforward question, but the answer to this question is going to be anything but straightforward and simple. It is it's going to it's going to require some thinking. It's going to require some thinking. So before we do any work, before we do do any work. Let's first take a look at, and I hope again, as always I tell you, I hope that the book is in front of you. Before we do any work, 
let's look at the picture that they actually gave us. The picture they gave us this thing here. And they said that, well, I, I went too bonkers. Because the way I drew it is, is, is going beyond the sort of center of this thing. So this is the center of this circle, this is the center of this region right here, and this is the center of this thing, and they're calling this C. And the question is, is point Q, some point Q, is it on the circle, let's call it Q1, or is it not on the circle? Are we dealing with this scenario, or are we dealing with that scenario? Is it on the circle, or is it not on the circle? But, what we need to understand is that, we are only interested in answering that question. Is point Q, is point Q on on the circle with center C. We do not care about this other bloody thing. The other thing is just there to annoy us. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. Erase it. It doesn't exist. Do you understand? So that's the first part. Let's begin the story. Let's see what they tell us. The first statement tells us that point R, point R is on the circle. On the circle. Now when I say on the circle, we're talking about a circle with center C. And for, they further told us, and the distance Q to R, they tell us, is equal to Q to C. Q to R is Q to C. Now, if point R is on the circle, if point R is on the circle, then, let's draw it here, point R is on the circle. If it's on the circle, then this distance, of course, is just the radius. This distance on the, is on the radius. Let's start again so we get rid of those two points. This is C, and point R, we are told, is on the circle. Let's draw point R. Let's, let's just draw it here. This is point C. As you can see, point, point R is on the circle. The question is, and, and we are told that Q to R, Q to R is same as Q to C. Q to C. So the one scenario, one possible scenario is that maybe Q is on the circle, right here. Q happens to be on the circle. In which case, Q to C, we are told, Q to C, is same as Q to R, Q to R. And if, as you can clearly see, as you can clearly see, because, because point P, because point R, we are told is on the circle, C to R is just the radius. And in this scenario, we're showing Q to be on the circle. If Q is also on the circle, there is also radius. And since the condition is that the distance Q to R, Q to R has to equal Q to C, uh, Q to C, Q to R, Q to R has to equal Q to C, which means this is a, in this scenario, the triangle QCR is an equilateral triangle, and that is possible. But that is not the only possibility. Here's another possibility: instead of making a tri, instead of making a, a equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle was only a fluke because we drew it on the circle. We drew the point on the circle, which is why. These two sides have to be equal to each other because we are told that Q to R, Q to R has to equal Q to C. That is given to us. The reason why this ended up being equilateral is because we put it on the on the on the circle here, and therefore this also be, this and therefore that distance became actually the same as this distance because this is simply the radius, because R is on the circle. We are told point R is on the circle, but. Is another scenario where instead of being an equilateral triangle, we can show it as an isosceles triangle, which is what I'm trying to make you understand. An isosceles triangle is very straightforward. Here it appears an isosceles triangle, right there. Instead of putting the Q there, let's call it Q1, let's call this Q2. And now, as you can see, we have fulfilled this condition. We have fulfilled this condition that Q to C, Q to C is same as Q to R, Q to R. But as you can clearly see, the Q is not on the circle. So we can't answer the question. It's not enough information. The first statement by itself is not enough. A, D, B, C, E. Let's look at the second statement. Second statement says that S is on the circle. S is on the circle. And Q to S is S to C. And the question again is, is point Q is point Q on the circle? So let's draw it. Let's draw another one here. Let's draw another one here. 
here is our C and we are told that Q to S is same as we are told that S is, S is on the circle so let's just put let's just put S first here there is our point S S is on the circle this is C so we already know this is radius and we are told that Q we are told that S to C is the same distance as Q to S S to C is the same distance as S to C which is very easy to see one possibility is this maybe it goes in a straight line and this is uh, what point would this be? This would be Q. There we go. Let's call it Q1. So in this case, the question is, is Q on the circle? The answer is no, Q is not on the circle. Or Q could have been here somewhere. Where this distance we have to have Q to S, Q to S, let's call it Q2, is the same distance as S to C. Again, as you can see, in this scenario also, this triangle just turns out to be a tri equilateral triangle because this is also radius. This is a radius. This distance from S to C is a radius. And this distance has to be same as that distance and therefore it's an equilateral triangle if Q happens to be on the circle. Or Q could be here in a straight line. So in this scenario, is Q on the circle? The answer is no, it's not. Is Q on the circle? The answer is yes, it is. Second statement does not do the job. Second statement by itself is not enough. Let's put the two statements together. Let's put the two, the two statements together and see what we can do. Let's put the two, two statements together. The reason I did not erase that one is because the first statement now is already there, so I don't have to redo it. Let's put them two, two together. So we already have this guy here. Let's put S somewhere. Ah, but the problem is here, I put I showed both of the scenarios together. First scenario of Q1 and Q2 together. And if you were to introduce this second statement together with it, it's going to become too much. So let's do them separately. Let's do them separately. It'll be easier to see. Separately in the sense that in the first scenario will show that Q is on the circle, in the second scenario will show that Q does not have to be on the circle. Let's do it together. Okay. So here's the first one. It's very straightforward. You simply have to make two isosceles triangles. Very simple, very straightforward. Just make two isosceles triangles and you're done. Here is our C. In this case, in this case, Q is on the circle. And we were told, this is the first statement. In the first statement, we were told that Q to R, first statement we were told that Q to R has to equal Q to C. This is Q, this is C, and this is R. Q to R, Q to R is the same distance as Q to C. Now as I already explained to you twice before that this, this also is radius and therefore it happens to be an equilateral triangle. It just happens, it just turns out to be an equilateral triangle is besides the point. That is not our concern. It just turns out. So fluke that's an equilateral triangle. Well, our concern is that this distance from Q to R better equal the distance from Q to C, which it is. And you can see Q is on the circle. The second condition was we also have to fulfill the second condition because we are doing them together. Second condition says that the Q to S has to equal S to C. Q to S right here. Q to S. Let's put, let's put three lines. Q to S has to equal Q to C. Again, you see, point is on the circle. Another possibility is that instead of putting it like that, we could have put it outside the circle. Let's put it here. Here is our C. And let's put a First condition is that point R has to be in the circle. Let's put R here and put the point outside. Right there. Let's put the Q here. In this case, this side equals that side. We were told that Q to C has to equal Q to R. That's the first condition. And the second condition is Q to S has to equal S to Q. And let's see what we can do here. Again, let me just draw another, draw another isosceles triangle. Draw another isosceles triangle. Pick a point carefully. Here is our S. Put pick a point carefully. There we go. This this side equals that side, and this side equals that side. But you can clearly see Q is not on the circle. Is Q on the circle? The answer here is yes, it is. The answer here is no, it is not. The answer to this question, after all of that work, annoyingly turns out to be E. No, there is not enough information, and ironically. Ironically, in these questions, in data sufficiency question, ironically, 
the, the, what I have found from my experience is that when the answer turns out to be E, when there is not enough information to answer the question, when you try, and, if you, and if you have to try to prove it to somebody, it actually takes more effort, more time, more energy to prove to somebody that it cannot be done. Whereas if there is enough information, you can very easily show that it can be done. There is enough information, I can answer the question. That goes very fast. But to prove the non-existence of something is more difficult. And that's what this is. Number 361. Number 361, I believe that is the last one on the page, in the column. Yes, it is. That's the last one in the column, 361. And you will see in a second, 361 is a very straightforward question because we're not asked to prove something that doesn't exist. We're not asked to prove that it cannot be done. We're simply, you will see, it, it can be done very easily and we can show it very easily. 361, which says that if we have three non-overlapping, non-overlapping, regions, non-overlapping regions, A, B, and C. A, they call this region A, this region B, this, this region is B, and this is region C. Question is, how much is A plus B? And it's important that we understand that they are non-overlapping, they're emphasizing it which means A plus B is simply this area and that area, not including this part. Do you understand? A does not, A, A does not mean the whole thing. It just means this, this, this region only, right here. This region only. And C is the other region only. I made, it, I made a mess of it now. Let me redraw it. It looks ugly. A, B, C. Oh, and they are, and they are equal sizes. I left that out. I left it out. They say again, which is why you have to have the book in front of you. Because if we do not know that information, A, B, and C are area of three non -lumbing. It says non-overlapping non regions are formed by intersection of two circles of equal area. Two circles of equal area. So the area of this circle is the same as the area of this circle, which is very important. Which is very important. Bit of information because otherwise we will not be able to answer the question. Let's see what we can do. Statement 1 tells us that A plus 2B plus C equals 24. A plus 2B plus C equals 24 which can be written as A plus B because that's what we are interested in plus B plus C equals 24. Now A plus B, A plus B because A and because these are two these two circles have equal area, which is why that information was very important. Because circle A as a whole is the same area as circle this circle as a whole. I shouldn't call it circle A. This circle right here has the same area as the other circle. Therefore, if A plus B, which is this plus this, has to equal B plus T. A plus B here equals B plus C. And therefore, if this sum is 24, then this must be 12 and this must be 12. And we are able to answer the question, how much is A plus B? A plus B is 12. The first statement, A, D, B, C, E. First statement does the job very nicely. Let's look at second statement. Second statement says that A plus C is 18. A plus C is 18. And they also go on to say that B is 3. Well, there you go. If A plus, A plus C is 18 and we know what B is, we can figure out A plus B. A, A plus C. A plus C is 18, which implies, which implies that A must be 9 and C must be 9. We're not interested in C, we are interested in A. We know what A is and we know what B is because they give it to us. Obviously, we can figure out what A plus B is. In this question, the answer is D. Both of these statements, both of these in statements individually, independently, are enough for us to be able to answer the question that is being asked. That was the end of that column. We're not going to start a new column right now. 
we'll meet again tomorrow and we'll pick up from the multiple choice questions that we were, that we were doing yesterday. All right? Again, as I said before, if you wish to get hold of me, simply send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. All right? Bye now.